everything we see, from people to cities to the millions of stars that fill the night sky. They're all made of the same stuff, atoms of matter. But there's something else out there, something weird, invisible dark matter. It fills our universe too, and it could be the key to the existence of everything, including us. What you see, what you know, everything in your experience is actually the tiniest, teeniest fraction of what's actually out there in the universe. Most of the matter in the universe is made of a substance that we have not even discovered yet. If you could put on some sort of, some sort of mask or goggles that could detect dark matter, you would see millions of them passing through you every second. Millions of them, billions all around you all the time. You can't see them, but their effect is very real. Crucially, we are now beginning to understand that ghostly tendrils of dark matter have shaped everything we see in our universe today. Scientists still don't know what dark matter actually is. How do you measure something that you can't see or feel? What's going on is when we measure gravity in the universe, the, the collective gravity of the stars, the planets, the moons, the gas clouds, the black holes, the, the, the whole galaxy. When we do this, 85% has no known origin. So it's not a matter of whether dark matter exists or not. It's a measurement, period. So here's how you actually measure the stuff. Uh, in a galaxy, which is the smallest aggregation of matter, where dark matter manifests. So you look how fast it's rotating, and we know from laws of gravity, first laid down by Johannes Kepler, and then, then uh, enhanced and uh, given further detail and deeper understanding by Isaac Newton. You write down these equations, say, oh, look how fast it's rotating. You invoke that rotation rate in the equation, and out the other side says, how much gravity, how much mass should be there attracting you? And the more mass that's there, the faster we expect you to be orbiting. That kind of makes sense. So when you do this calculation on a galactic scale, we get vastly more mass attracting you than we actually can detect. I'm adding up stars, gas clouds, moons, planets, black holes. Add it all up. It's a fraction of what we know is attracting you in this orbit. And we cannot detect the rest. And so we hand it this title, Dark Matter. Dark Matter is not even what we should be calling it. Because that implies that it's matter. It implies we know something about it that we actually don't. So a more precise labeling for it would be dark gravity. Now, if I called it dark gravity, are you going to say, does dark gravity really exist? I'd say, yeah, because 85% of the gravity has no known origin. There it is. Let's figure out what's causing it. Did colliding dark matter particles really make all the ordinary matter we see in the universe today? It depends on what dark matter particles are made of. The best bet is that dark matter is a particle 100 times the mass of a proton. But unlike ordinary matter, it doesn't interact with light or anything else. Wimps are the leading contender because if you plug their properties into computer simulations of the Big Bang, you end up with a universe that looks just like the universe we see today, with 84% dark matter and just 16% ordinary matter. We get numbers that correspond roughly to the amount of dark matter we infer in the universe. So there's good evidence, indirectly, that these particles maybe the dark matter. I think the over-under on what dark matter might be 
uh, today. I, I think we're all kind of leaning towards a family of particles, subatomic particles, that have hardly any ability to interact with the particles we have come to know and love, quote, ordinary matter. And that would make it matter, dark matter, as we've all been describing it. And it's not a weird thing that you could have a particle that doesn't interact with our particles. Within our own family of particles, there are examples where the interaction is very weak or non-existent. You might have heard of neutrinos. This is a, a ghost-like particle that permeates the universe and hardly interacts with familiar matter at all. Yet it is part of our family of particles that we know exist and that we can detect and uh, interact with. So if, that can, if, if we can have an elusive particle that's part of our own familiar family of particles, it's not much of a stretch to think of a whole other category of particles where none of them give a rat's ass about the rest of us and they just pass right through us as though we're not even there. Now here's what's interesting about dark matter. We know it doesn't interact with us, except gravitationally. By the way, what do I mean by interact? D does it bind and make atoms and molecules and solid objects? No, it does not interact with us in any important known way. But it also doesn't interact with itself. That's what's interesting. So if it interacted with itself, you can imagine finding dark matter planets dark matter galaxies because to interact with yourself is what allows you to accumulate and have a concentration of matter in one place versus another. These are the atomic bonds and the molecular bonds that create solid objects. And if particles do not interact with one another, they just pass through, you just have this zone of mass not really doing anything interesting. So dark matter not only doesn't interact with us, it doesn't interact with itself.